of statistical data right so look right here right here we have a picture of Chris Gale and Brian Lara and we may ask you who's a better cricketer or who was a better ODI cricketer Chris Gale or Lara and you can see how many runs each of them scored their mean score median their mode their highest score all of that good stuff is right there now to represent these on a data to describe who is better, right? We're used to using pie charts, by charts, line graph, and cumulative frequency. That's what we do in CSEC mathematics, right? Yeah, man, that's what we do in CSEC math. Now, here is a picture now where, look at this. We use by chart, a bar chart right here, and it can compare their mean score. We can compare their median score, both of them having mode of zero, both of them having a lowest of zero, comparing their highest. And as we compare them, we can then use these to determine who's a better player. But we're not going to be learning these diagrams, all right? The two diagrams we're going to be learning about are stem and leaf and the box and whisker, also known as box plot. So you're wondering, what is this stem and leaf? Now, a stem and leaf diagram is just a diagram that quickly summarizes data while maintaining its individual data points. The best way to understand stem and leaf is with an example. Now look at this right here. It says the grades of 15 students in additional mathematics class at CXE Math TV High School are... So it gives us the 15 students grade, 75, 89, 92, 95, 87, 90, 62, 25, 39, 42, 55, 80, 75, 70, and 69. So to create our stem and leaf diagram, here are the three steps to create the stem and leaf. Step number one, identify the lowest and the highest of the data set. So as we can see, the lowest is 25. The highest is 95 and then rearrange the data in ascending order so do that good so now that we rearrange it in ascending order we can go on to step number two step number two is we need to create a stem to represent the tens units i will need a leaf to represent the single units so for example 90 is nine tens and zero units so a stem can look like this, 9 slash 0, which means a test score of 90. So 8 slash 0 would mean a test score of 80. 7 slash 5 would mean a test score of 75. So let's create our stem and our leaf. So here are the stem. We're using 1 slash 0 to represent 10. And so on the stems, we put our units 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, straight up to 9. All right, the lowest test score is 25. So we'll put five right there for the leaf. Then we'll look into the 30s. The next lowest is 39. So we'll put nine into the leaf. All right, in the 40s now, there's only 42 there. So we'll put two for the leaf because four slash two means 42. When you have 55, five slash five, 62 and 67, you put two. Then you put 7. The 6 slash 2 means 62. And the 6 slash 7 means 67. And you continue for the rest. And that's your stem and leaf. It's so, 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 so easy. So let's take another one. Here's another one for you to try. It says a survey was done at CXE Math TV asking students about the length of time they study per day. 20 students took part in the survey and the times are giving as follows 66 112 50 101 68 85 97 75 84 105 and all of that good stuff 
all right so create a stem and leaf diagram so go ahead and attempt it all right so first of course we put it in order so rearrange from lowest to highest so the least amount of time spent was 30 30 minutes the highest was 112 they'll put the rest in order now that we get it in ascending order we create our stem so we realize that we're going from 310 so we put a 3 and we're going up to 11 tenths for 110 and then we can put in our leaf 3 slash 0 4 slash 5 because 45 is next then 50 is next so we put 0 in the leaf then 1 is next then 0 so that's 6 slash 0 then 62 then 68 and we continue very easy now sometimes you're given a stem and leaf diagram with it has to depict two data or two information so look at this example right here consider the heights of boys and girls at cxc math tv high school construct a stem and leaf diagram so the heights of the boys are 155 170 173 167 170 181 183 161 and 155 then the heights of the girls are given 170, 153, 155, 154, 159, 161, all the way up to 173. So to construct our stem and leaf, we know step one is to rearrange the data. So let's rearrange it from highest, or rather from lowest up to highest for both boys and girls. Good. So now we create our stem. Now that we create our stem, what we say, you know we have 15 10 so we'll put 15 there 16 17 18 now under the leaf we know we have boys being 155 centimeters so we'll put a five there we'll put another five for the next boy at 155 they will put a one in the row with 16 as the stem they will put a seven that's for 167 all right now we continue for the rest for the boys. Let's go over to the girls. 153 first, so we'll put a 3 in the leaf. 154 next, so we'll put a 4 in the leaf. 155 next, so we'll put a 5 in the leaf. And so forth. We continue. That's literally all there is to stem and leaf. So what are the advantages of stem and leaf? Stem and leaf can be used quickly to organize a large list of data in real life. Because in real life, you just put it in spreadsheet and then you sort it, all right? Just like how, instead of we doing it with our hands and calculating, remember, we're in a technological era. We put a stem and leaf diagram in spreadsheet. It's convenient and easy to determine mean mode or, me well, mode and median more so. And outliers are easily visible. Now, what's the disadvantage? It's not very informative for a small set of data. It's better for large sets of data. So now we can move on to what's a box plot. What is this box plot? Now the box plot is just a simple way of representing statistical data in pretty much a rectangular box. And the box plot has five main information. All right. So to create a box plot, we only need five information. Maximum value, upper quartile, lower quartile, median, and the minimum value. In other words, we just need five information to create our box plot. Now what's the maximum value? It's the highest value in a data set. What's the minimum value? The lowest value in a data set. So look here. Mark got these scores on his AdMath test for term one. 91, 93, 57, 82, 70, and 75. What was Mark's highest? 93. Nice. What was Mark lowest in the test? 57. Now, upper quartile. Upper quartile is the median of the upper half of a data set. So, all you need to do is rearrange the data set in ascending order and then look at the median of the upper half of that data set. Let's look at an example. Mark got scores of 91, 93, 90, 57, 82, 70, and 75. 
If we arrange in order, we have 57, 70, 75, 82, 90, 91, 93. Cool. So now if we rearrange it, we can clearly see our upper half is the 90, 91, 93. And the lower half is the 57, 70, 75. So the median is 82, but the median of the upper half is 91 in between the 90 and 93. And the median for the lower half, all right, is going to be the lower quartile. Median for the upper half is the upper quartile Q3. Nice. So the upper half have a median of 91. Now another way you could find out the upper quartile is using the upper quartile formula by first finding the position of the upper quartile. The formula is given by 3 quarter of the n plus 1 term. So n is what? n is the number of terms there are. How many scores did Matthew have? 7 tests, so 7 scores. 3 quarter of 7 plus 1 is 3 quarter of 8. 3 quarter of 8 is the 6th term. Then you ask yourself in ascending order, what is the 6th term? The 6th term is 91. So the upper quartile is 91. The next thing to find is lower quartile. So what is the lower quartile? The lower quartile is the fourth, is the first fourth of the data set. So to find the lower quartile, we can just use the same formula, but instead of three quarter, it's a quarter of the n, of the n plus one term. So all we'd have to do is look at the data set given. So let's use the same example for mark scores. Mark got those scores and we put it in ascending order. So now of all those scores that Mark got, right, the lower quartile is going to be the media, median of the lower half. The lower half is 57, 70, 75. So the median of the lower half is 70. Likewise, we can find that Q1 is a quarter of 7 plus 1, which is the second term, and the second term is 70. That's how you find the lower quartile. Finally, the median. How do we find the median? We all know to find the median. We just average the two middle terms and that's the median. So to write it as a formula, it's a half of the n plus one position. So anytime you're given a given set of data, the median is called Q2 and it's a half the n plus one term. Put n as seven, seven plus one is eight. A half of eight is the fourth term. So you look in a data set in ascending order, the fourth term is 82. And that's the median. Beautiful. Now we can create a box plot for Mark. First thing I want you to then do is draw a box. Draw a box. When you draw a box, that's the box. Now you need whiskers on your box. So put on two whiskers. Now at the extreme level, left just put on a little circle at the tail of the whisker now label that with the minimum value the minimum value in this case is 57. next to the minimum value is going to be q1 that's the next closest value to it so at the start of the box that value right there which is 70 that's your lower quartile and then label the other end of the box which is your upper quartile you label that as 91. Then the other end of the whisker, you label as a maximum, that's 93. Then now, what was the median? 82. Now, on the box, between 70 to 91, 82 is closer to which end? The 91, right? So we draw 82, just a little bit skewed to the right. And then, you just draw a line through the middle of the box, that's your median. That's it, that's it, that's it. That's a box plot. Beautiful. So take this question right here and attempt it. All right, a survey done at CXC Math TV asking students about the length of time they study. The length of times are given there. Create a box plot. So attempt this question. All right, let's attempt it together. So first we rearrange it in ascending order. I hope everyone would have done that. 
And after you rearrange the data in ascending order, you tell them the five summary data we need. We can clearly see our maximum is 112, the minimum is 30. We find the median. The median is a half the n plus one term. So that's the 10th term plus the 11th term divided by two. That's 75 plus 75 divided by two, that's 75. We then need the upper quartile and the lower quartile. The lower quartile is a quarter of 20 plus one, which is the 5.25 term. The fifth term is what? 60. And the sixth term is 62. So you add those and divide by two. That give you the lower quartile. Good. Let's find the upper quartile now. Three quarter of the n plus one term. Good. Then we divide that by two. Upper quartile is then 93.5. Once we get the upper quartile out of the way now and the lower quartile, we have all our five important data. So again, you draw your box. You put on your whiskers. Then you label the edges of the whiskers. And then now put the information in there. The lower edge, that's 30. The upper edge of the whisker, 112. Then label the ends of the box with Q1 and Q3, the lower and upper quartile. Then you put on your median. Now 75 is closer to here, 93.5. So it's kind of skewed to the right. And that's it. All right. Now what are the advantages of box plot? Now the box plot, it graphically displays a variable's location and it's spread at a glance. It may indicate the data symmetry. That's a big advantage. Unlike any other, the box plot shows outliers. And by using the box plot, we're able to, if you're comparing two different datas for two different sets of groups of something, and you have two different box plot, if you put them side by side, it gives you a good indicator to be able to compare the two data sets. So that's a big advantage of box plot. Big disadvantage, it hides the multimodality and other features of the distribution. From the box plot, we can work out standard deviation and all of those things. All right, we don't know if it has more than one mode or those sort of stuff. Big disadvantage of box plot. So I really hope this video was beneficial. Those are the two types of statistical diagrams you need to know for ADMA, stem and leaf and box plot diagram. All right, so stay tuned for more. And I hope this video was fun for you, just as it was for me. All right, take care. See you soon.